Warning, your Etsy account has been suspended for violating our terms of service. Yep, I am sure that that is pretty much the number one nightmare of most print-on-demand store owners on Etsy. And I'll be honest, YouTubers, myself included, do not talk about this stuff enough because it's true. If you use print-on-demand platforms the wrong way, it can kill your store and even get it banned. Which is exactly why I don't use the cheapest printing providers, even though it means that I might earn less money per sale. So here's the thing, if you have a print on demand store or stores on their own website, such as a Shopify store like me, then bad reviews don't matter as much. However, if you also sell on third party marketplaces like eBay or Etsy, like me, then bad reviews matter a lot because third party marketplaces like eBay and Etsy can and do suspend stores which have too many bad reviews and a low customer satisfaction score. And on the flip side, these marketplaces reward stores which have great reviews and very high customer satisfaction scores. So it is crucial that you try and keep each customer you have as happy as possible. And I'll be honest with you, the fastest way to having an unhappy customer is to send them a bad product and some print-on-demand providers are just not as good as others at consistently creating high quality products. So for example, in this video here, I reviewed three different t-shirt printing providers that are available on Printify. One of them was Monster Digital, who are currently selling the Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirt for $9.13. And another was SwiftPod, a cheaper print-on-demand shop, who is selling them for just $8.32. Now you might be thinking, well, Monster Digital, they cost 10% more. That's a big difference, right? Well, so is the difference in their print quality. In this video, I compared two different t-shirt prints side by side. Monster Digital was easily the best print. And so for me, I don't let price be the deciding factor between which print provider I use. Instead, I let quality be the deciding factor. And if the best provider happens to cost an extra 10%, it is worth paying that to avoid negative reviews. Plus it also makes me money in the long run because happy customers have a funny habit of turning into repeat customers. And there's something else that can get you banned very fast and that is if you sell unique products. So I don't want to throw shade, but there are lots of YouTube videos out there saying that you shouldn't sell t-shirts because it's too hard and it's too competitive and you should instead sell lower competition, unique products. However, something which just doesn't get talked about enough is that those unique products can also be very risky. And to explain why, let me show you something. So this here is the Bala Canvas 3001. It is the most popular print on demand t-shirt on Etsy. As you can see, there are lots of different print providers out there that sell this t-shirt. Well then, let's say that you had chosen to use my favorite print provider, Monster Digital, to create your t-shirts. But due to supply issues out of their control, Monster Digital ran out of large sized t-shirts. Well, that would be absolutely fine because you could just switch to a different print provider temporarily to get the customer their t-shirt. Or you could even switch to the more expensive but very high quality Printful to fulfill them for you. Now then, let's compare this to a very different item, the print on demand hockey puck. So perhaps you'd come to Etsy and you saw that there were already thousands of different cat t-shirts out there and you thought it would be too hard to create a t-shirt and stand out in this niche. And so you decided to instead check to see if there were any cat themed hockey pucks and you found that there were basically none and figured that, well, I should sell this because there's no competitors. And so you went and created your cat hockey puck and you added it into Etsy and then it actually started selling. Amazing, right? But then a supply chain issue happens and the print provider MIA runs out of hockey pucks. Well, you have no other suppliers here on Printify that offer this and other print providers such as Printful certainly don't. And so now with no other option, you have to refund your customers. But for many customers, that isn't enough. They are angry that you sold them something that you couldn't fulfill and you wasted their time. So now they leave you a negative review, putting your store at risk. Now, look, I'm not saying that you shouldn't sell hockey pucks because it's true that if you sell a popular common item like a t-shirt, there are lots of other great t-shirts out there. And so you do have to put a lot more effort in and do more niche research to create a design that stands out. 
However, you're also rewarded for that extra effort by building a stable business which has a stable supply chain. So, you know, pros and cons. <laughs> And by the way, if you'd like to learn what my favorite print on demand items are to sell, you should be sure to get a free copy of my ebook, The Six Steps That Six Figure Online Stores Follow to Make Over $10,000 a Month. You can get a copy of my ebook emailed to you for free by clicking on the link in the video description below. But anyway, back to the video. And on to the next thing that can get you banned, selling unique product colors. So look, I see an argument for selling unique products which are high risk but high reward but I do not see any good argument for selling unique product color variants. So what do I mean by this? Well, remember how this t-shirt here has lots of different print providers selling it? Well, as you can see, some offer this t-shirt in more colors than others. Take this print shop, Fulfill Engine. They offer it in lots of colors. In fact, they're the only provider offering these shirts in the pebble brown color. And so let's say that you like this color and you had an idea for a design that matched it. You might think, great, I'll use Fulfill Engine for my t-shirts. But the problem is that YouTubers, myself included, don't spend enough time talking about the fact that print providers can go out of stock for specific variants. Case in point, you can see that they're currently out of stock for all of their pebble brown color t-shirts. Well, wouldn't it have sucked if you had advertised this and made this your most popular color because now you would have no other print shop that you could switch to. You'd have angry customers that you were now forced to refund and cancel orders for, risking again negative reviews. Which is why I personally only bother selling popular colors that lots of print providers sell. I mean, look how many of them are selling black t-shirts. So I just don't think that it's worth the stress, but if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. And there's something else that I never sell, and that is products that run small. Because here's the thing, right, is, unfair as it kind of is, there are customers out there that will leave you a negative review if they choose to buy an item that doesn't fit them. So before I sell any clothing, I will come to the product listing in the print on demand app and check to see if it says that it is true to size. What this means is that if you'd go into a department store and then usually pick up a medium sized t-shirt off the rack, then a medium in this t-shirt is likely to be a great fit for you. Whereas some product listings, especially clothing that's designed for women, will instead say that it runs small. This means then that if you'd usually pick up a medium sized t-shirt off a rack in a department store, then a medium in this t-shirt brand would not fit you. Instead, you'd have to order up, you'd have to order a large or maybe even an extra large t-shirt. And so I just don't worry about the stress and only sell clothing and accessories that runs true to size. I also make sure to check reviews for base products on websites like Jiffy Shirts and Amazon. So something else that some customers will also do is they will leave reviews if they dislike the base product that you're printing on. So if you sell them a t-shirt, for example, and they don't like the material, they'll leave a negative review or if they buy a mug and they don't like how it feels to hold, well, they'll leave a negative review. And so if a base product is branded, I like to go and check out the reviews for it. So for example, let's take the Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirt again. Well, what you can do for clothing like this is you can come to Jiffy Shirts and you can look up the product page for it, such as the Bella Canvas 3001, and see what people have to say about it. You'll see that it has a very high review score and that the majority of people confirm that it does run true to size, which is great. And you'll also see that people are saying that it's super soft. You'll also see that a lot of people do find the material to be thin, which is true, it is a thinner t-shirt, which mostly only matters for the white t-shirt since it can be a bit see-through. So this might help you decide by reading the reviews that you won't sell white t-shirts and you'll instead pick another color. So there's a lot that you can learn about from reading reviews like this. And it's not just clothing that you can check out reviews for. There's lots of non-clothing items that print providers sell that's also branded. So take for example this magnet that's being sold by the provider Duplium. They're using a magnet made by a provider called Magnum Magnetics. Well, if we check out the reviews, for Magnum Magnetics, you'll see that they are very highly reviewed with people saying that they stick very strongly onto surfaces. So chances are customers will also like this too. 
and take this mug here, which is being sold by My Locker. They are using a particular mug that is called the ORCA Coated Mug. Now, these are listed for sale on Amazon, so you can actually go over to Amazon and read the reviews on there. And generally, the reviews show that people really do like the mugs themselves, and most of the negative reviews on here were for the fact that Amazon shipped it to them poorly. <laughs> And something else that isn't talked about is that it's a good idea to audit print providers before you use them. Now, of course, YouTubers sort of do mention this because plenty of YouTubers, myself included, have reviewed different print-on-demand companies. But that's not all because something that I just don't see being talked about is that you can deep dive into a company profile and their company reviews. Because what a lot of people don't realize is that on Printify, the print on demand companies you see here, such as MyLocker, are entirely separate companies that have nothing to do with Printify. So it's a good idea to audit the company reviews and their company pages. And one place that you can do that is with Site Jabber. If we come to Site Jabber, you'll see that MyLocker does not have good company reviews at all. But to be fair, you do need to actually read the reviews. <laughs> For example, this review here is just a customer complaining that a face mask that they sell uses thin material. And well, if you don't plan to sell face masks with My Locker, this review is kind of irrelevant. However, this review here is from someone that ordered a t-shirt with them from Printify and they showed the print quality with photos, which was not good. And so if you were planning on using My Locker for t-shirts, then this is an important review to read. Now, to be fair, the people in life that have a bad experience are always going to be the loudest, and so you shouldn't expect a company to have perfect reviews. But let's be honest, a one-star rating is a pretty big red flag. And another thing that you can do is you can find the company's address and then look them up on Google Maps. For example, I went to the My Locker official website and I found that they were based in Detroit on their hiring page. And so I looked them up on Google Maps and checked out their reviews, and again, you've got to actually read them because a lot of these reviews were left by employees either talking about having a good or bad experience working for them, but you'll also see reviews from people here who have actually purchased products from them. And so those reviews are very helpful to read. And so on to the next thing that you really need to know about. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, me. Yes, as my subscribers know, Due to shady YouTube sponsors, I am currently choosing to sponsor my own videos and I am sponsoring it today to let you know that if you would like to build a print on demand store but you don't know how, then you should be sure to check out my print on demand course, the Ecom Clubhouse, so that you can build your store alongside me. If you would like to see if my course is right for you, I will have a link to it in the video description below. But anyway, back to the video. And onto something else that I wish was talked more about, and that is that Chinese print providers are risky. So I've definitely seen a lot of YouTube videos recommending that you use print on demand providers based in China. And I do understand why, because China is the number one country in the world by far for manufacturing consumer goods. So the truth is, if you work with a Chinese print on demand supplier, you're gonna have access to a much broader range of goods. Take sneakers, on Printify there are two suppliers that make sneakers, both are based in China, which is understandable since that is where, well, most sneakers are made. The problem though, with all of this, is Chinese New Year. During Chinese New Year holidays, the whole country basically shuts down for two weeks, plus there's about two weeks either side of it where there are big shipping and manufacturing delays, and so that's about six weeks of the year that your customers will experience major delays. Now you can warn your customers about this in advance, but if this video has taught you anything, there are plenty of customers out there that will ignore those warnings and just buy from you anyway. And they will still leave you negative reviews, and so I just choose not to bother with this. And instead, what I do is I prioritize products that are being printed globally around the world. Possibly the most incredible, amazing thing to me is that despite the fact that I live in little New Zealand, the internet is a global place. Anyone in the world can find my stores and items and buy them. It is amazing. Which is why to give my global customers the best experience possible and to increase the chances that they will leave me a five-star review, I choose to prioritize products which are produced in multiple different continents. Because if a product is made on the continent that somebody lives in, shipping will be much faster rather than having to be flown halfway across the world. So let's say for example that I was deciding between Printify's three top-selling zip-up hoodies. 
Well, I wouldn't choose to sell this one because no print provider for it is based in North America, which easily has the biggest customer base of English speakers. And I wouldn't sell this one because even though it's printed around the world, it's not printed by providers with amazing reviews. Instead, I would sell this one. Not only is it printed in the USA, Canada, Europe, and Australia, but it's also printed by suppliers that have good reviews and a solid proven history of happy customers. And so this is easily the one that I would choose. So then, did you learn something new from my video? If so, please subscribe. And if you'd like to watch my print on demand provider reviews, be sure to watch my video, Printful vs Printify t-shirt review. So go ahead, watch my next video, and I'll see you over there.